Hello, viewers. So uh, I got many queries on uh, one particular stock called Sequence Scientific. And one of the reasons being, uh, I presented this stock somewhere in November 2020. So maybe one year, three months back. And after that, uh, for five, six months, the stock did really well. But after that, you know, the stock has been a big underperformer. And from uh, making a high of some 330, the stock is down to almost 150. And I've been getting a lot of queries. So I thought, why not to make a video? Uh, and highlight what has happened, what has gone right or wrong, and you know, well, uh, as per me, you know, how does it look going forward? So one disclaimer: uh, whatever we are dis discussing, nothing is a stock recommendation. I'm just presenting my views, and everybody needs to take their own view based on you know uh, their own analysis and take only these as pointers for their own analysis. So if we look into history, when we met that presentation, there were few risks which we had identified. Uh, if you see, there is one key risk which we had identified was currency fluctuation risk, uh, which you can clearly see here. We had identified the correct currency fluctuation risk. Uh, we have also identified this risk through some of the uh, you know annual report of companies which are located in Europe or US because India may not have many such companies. And the currency fluctuation risk actually has played out in terms of uh, you know uh, the overall Turkey situation and Turkey being one of the key reasons. The other risk which played out, uh, we had highlighted that there is no lack of long history. And why I stress on long history? Because when you have a company's history of 10 years of uh, you know, poor business, you get a sense of uh, whether whatever they're telling that is right or wrong, uh, what they say about strength of the business in terms of their pricing capability, their margins, their ability to pass through raw material. When you look at 10-year data, you get a sense whether, you know, what kind of company is it? Can they maintain their margins or when the cycle turns, their margin depresses? And when we don't get this kind of history, uh, it becomes a little difficult to trust the number or trust whatever you see as a sustainable one. And here I had that uh, issue because I saw there is no lack of long history. And I think this is one reason I have been able to save myself from stocks like Newland where I have seen uh, you know, regularly every two, three years, they go through a margin compression cycle, but here we didn't have history. So uh, I had this kind of caution and this is also another risk which we can see is triggering out because the raw material prices shoot up has led to, uh, you know, huge compression in the gross margins. Uh, there is one more risk which we had highlighted key main risk because certain key top executives who have built this company and grown this company, what if they leave? And recently there was a news of the company CEO, he's leaving. So you can see out of five, six, seven risks highlighted, actually three risks triggered at the same time within same three, four months. And uh, that is why understanding the risks of a business is very, very important because in the market, every, you know, uh, everybody talks of opportunity, but very few will talk of risk. And as a uh, investor, we have to be cognizant of those risks because when the risks trigger, it impacts the valuation, it impacts the price, it impacts the sentiment. And until unless we don't understand the risk, until unless we don't understand the impact of that risk, you know, we will not be able to, you know, factor in in our, you know, overall strategy. The fourth point was when we presented this almost one and a half years back, we also gave our own understanding of valuation. And if you see the kind of valuation we gave, the green was the band where we expected, you know, uh, the kind of valuation we would want it to give around somewhere around in 25x. And then based on the price to, you know, margin to cash flow conversion, our most optimistic scenario was a 21% CAGR and our medium scenario was a 18% CAGR. And this was somewhere in November 2020 and the price was somewhere around, you know, 150 rupee. And this was the kind of valuation we had seen around FY23. So from, uh, you know, November 2021, 22, 23, three years at 21% CAGR was our best case scenario, which leads to maybe 70% return over three years. And that time the price was almost 150. So if you take 70% of 150, you will come around uh, almost uh, uh, 255 rupee. So 255 rupee was the price which I was looking at around FY23. But what actually happened is, and this was the technical chart at that time. And 150, another reason of taking this, uh, you know, at 150 was, uh, 150 was a huge resistance. And that time based on good earnings, this looked like it was trying to cross this, you know, 140, 145 mark. 
and we highlighted this could be one very good support once it crosses and sustains and 105 if this breaks 105 was the other big support we were looking at so the plan was to accumulate at 150 a 145 and then at 105 uh, but the way the prices move we never saw actually that uh, you know 105 price and what happened this is the 150 price and from 150 price the stock went to almost 340 rupee here and as i spoke about the valuation my estimate was 21 percent CAGR, 70 percent return by uh, 2023 end but what happened from November 2020 in june just in seven months the price went from 150 to 330 so i had a price in mind that i can get 255 rupee in 2023 but i am getting 330 340 rupee in 2000 uh, you know 21 itself within six to seven months so you can i mean if even if you take the view of valuation this was kind of you know 150 this was almost a 120 130 percent return against uh expected 21 percent CAGR return so i'm just trying to highlight uh if you think in terms of valuation what was expected and what we were getting you can assume the kind of overvaluation the stock had uh, we will come to the technicals later on i just wanted to stress upon the price move and uh, how far the stock has gone from valuation because when we will discuss the learnings whether we should buy we should sell uh, you know all these points will become relevant and let us go later on we'll come back to this chart again so what went wrong after that so uh, as i highlighted some of the key risks we, which we have seen got triggered and if you see, this was the quarter, this was the last good quarter, which we had, uh, you know, where uh, somewhere in uh, March 2020 or, uh, yeah, this was February 2021. Uh, it looked like another good quarter with, you know, decent uh, revenue growth rate, uh, almost, uh, you know, 34%, 35% EBITDA growth rate. The management also says that they're confident of sustaining this momentum for foreseeable future and all of that. But after that, what happened after that, whatever quarters came, whether it is, uh, you know, uh, you know, July, 2021, December, 2021, the recent quarter, you will see that there are a lot of expenses. The margins got hit, the raw material prices shoot up. You can see the gross margin is taking a hit here. Uh, further gross margin has taken a hit. The EBITDA margin has taken a hit. There were a lot of one-time expenses. Uh, there were certain uh, one-time payments done to external advisors because company was working on sequent two. And for that, they had hired a lot of consultants. Then there were some kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, write-off on the facility. There were some past expenses which were past uh, enhanced claims were there uh, and again i there is one more reason when the carlyle came the prior promoter was there uh, somewhere uh, you know in that previous promoter history i was not very confident and to me it looks like some of those old things started coming up when the new promoters came and uh, these were some of the one-offs which happened so even i feel even some of the deeds of you know previous promoter got carried forward here and uh, the uh, COVID second wave also hit, so your sales also got impacted. And then this whole raw material inflation issue has captured, you know, uh, all the businesses. Like if you see currently the top line, Q3 top line growth rate of all the 500 plus companies has been 25%. But if you look at a beta growth, it's hardly, you know, 10 to 13%. So all of this has happened. It has impacted the business. The, uh, the Turkey issue has happened. Uh, the CEO has also, you know, uh, left. So the currency risk got triggered. Uh, as we said, the lack of long history came haunting because we couldn't get good sense of margin. And that is why, you know, when I think of valuation, I try to factor in a lot of these. And that is why when I try to present a story and when I try to take my own position, I try to ensure that, you know, these things are factored in terms of valuation. If we think in terms of fundamentals, so the key person risk got triggered some of the past deeds, you know, that came out of, you know, accounting. The other thing, if you see these consultancy charges and all, they have done a few senior level hiring in US and all, these are front loaded expenses. So they have to build certain businesses. They are thinking about the sequence too, but it will not happen out of fair 
Uh, first, you need to put the effort and expenses, and then you will get the your fruits out of it. Something like you have heard the concept of operating leverage, where you put the capex, you get the employees, you put everything, you take loans, so your interest shoots up, your depreciation shoots up, and then you get the benefit. So even in this business, right now, what is happening? I see there is some kind of front-loaded expenses which are there, and the benefits will come in FY23 or FY24 and beyond. Uh, also, there were new promoter-based changes, new ESOP policies because they wanted to, you know, uh, compensate employees through the right ESOP policy for skin in the game and all. So there is a, even though it's a non-cash transaction in the PNL, there is a hit because PNL is accounting. So uh, there is a PNL change. So based on all that, what has happened? If we look at the sales growth uh, and uh, uh, you know. Uh, uh, PBIT growth, excluding the other income, because we want to focus on the core margin and then the PBT margin tax. Part uh, I'm not taking because of taxation. It can you know go here and there, but what you see is you know from a very good sales growth from a higher margin in next three to four quarters, the company sales growth has almost almost come to zero. The margins have almost come to their lows, like around one percent, and now. In this quarter, you have seen finally some turnaround happening. So if this sustains, then can we say that this is the bottom, but this is where we are, that we have seen a low and the latest quarter is a little better than the previous quarter uh, based on sales growth, based on EBITDA margin, based on PBT margin. So we are at the lowest top line growth. We are at the lowest bottom line growth. There has been a margin contraction. There has been a, been a severe price correction where the stock went from 150 rupee, the price point at which around we presented to 330, which was like, you know, 120% return against expected 21% CAGR to back to 150. And uh, there are signs of bottom. So let me just come and show the signs of bottom point. So if you look at the current chart, and I will tell you by chart also like the sell part and all, but right now, if you look at the prices, uh, this was the level at which we had taken entry around 145. And that was also a support because here it acted as the resistance. And now for the first time, this acted as support. And again, it is trying to struggle here. And at this, uh, two good volume bars have come. If you look at the RSI, uh, the sign of RSI in the positive direction, so, but still the stock is below its 200, uh, you know, uh, it's 250 days moving average, which is your 50 week. <coughs> and if you see the 50 week moving average is acting as a resistance here, it acted as a resistance here, it acted as a resistance. So right now it looks like it is trying to form a bottom, but we can't say with confidence, but there are indications and still for any kind of momentum that looks a wee far-fetched dream because there is a lot of uh, you know resistance which will come so this is where we are and so what are the key lessons we learn out of it so first lesson is always factor there is and if you see my tweets n number of time i always tell valuation matters because people will talk see this whole thing of good company quality company it changes with year i have seen 20 good companies in 20 to you know 10 different years so as an investor what is in our hand is the kind of valuation we are going to pay for the business and there is no business in equity which doesn't have risk uh, every year when the prices go up the earnings are at best management gives the best guidance it looks like it will not have risk but every business has risk and it's all about the risk getting triggered so always factor the risk never overpay respect your valuation i mean just imagine i mean i have imagined in foy 23 my expected price is from 150 to 255 and in six months i'm getting a price of 300 plus so i don't know if i can't call it overvaluation then what i should call it third is business and valuation they are dynamic and non-linear it changes you can't have a view five years two years back and you can't stick to the same view because the world changes the businesses changes the good companies, good managements over long period, they perform, but they also go through their own ups and downs. And if you are not a very long-term investor, then you can't on one side say that I want to hold, but other side, you can't get scared. You have to build your own conviction. So business and valuation is dynamic and it's non-linear. So these kind of phases will come. And that is why if we don't overpay, we can sit and wait for the right opportunity when there is pessimism and we can buy. I know there is a, you know, 
this whole uh, the theory of you know you should always buy high and that works it's not like it doesn't work but you need to be nimble footed to exit you can't buy high and then hold it and then you know say so if you are buying low you will get your margin of safety but you will have to have the patience that uh, good managements will do well and some of them may not do well if you are buying high you have to be nimble footed to sell but business and valuation is dynamic and if you want to fundamentally track the company you have to continuously track the company valuation understand whether it is improving deteriorating and you know take decision the fourth is buy when fearful sell when greedy the same old rule works uh, people were greedy at 300 at those kind of valuation which uh, you know i could have never thought of and then you are telling that uh, you know if i purchase at 300 why i should be scared at 5 150 but why are you scared if you are willing to pay at 300 rupees so buy when everybody is fearful sell when everybody is greedy and still some of the bets may not work but in terms of probability that should work five and most important is respect chart because i see when people are fundamental the whole image is oh i love fundamental and you know i am a long term investor and i don't need to look at chart but only when the price correct 50% then all the long term investing goes for a toss so why i am highlighting respect chart is let's go to the chart of uh, you know uh, sequence scientific uh, see what has happened somewhere here this price was 330 340 rupee price and if you can see this is a very uh, you know big bearish dozy which has you know formed how to interpret it what do you see is this price has gone here and all of a sudden in the same week this price has fallen that means the bears are taking control and the bears didn't allow the bulls to succeed so this was the first warning sign the second warning sign is when again and again on a weekly basis uh, you know this stock is not able to cross the previous price and you can see multiple bearish dozies such long needles it all says that you know the bears are dominating the third big sign came when this big fall happened with such a big you know red volume bar and then the stock has gone below its 13 week moving average its 20 week if you see this whole chart the whole journey whenever the stock fell the 13 week moving average came to rescue the 13 week moving average came to rescue the 13 week moving average came to rescue the 13 week 13 week 13 week 13 week 13 week and here you break the 13 week here you break the 20 week you great your support at the 50 week moving average and then again it has fallen below that and the same 50 week moving average is acting as resistance resistance even right now it is acting as a resistance so ideally you should have monitored all of this now the whole thing is funda uh, how being a fundamental investor did you know that the ceo is going to quit and if you are not able to get that information the whole fundamental research is of no use let me tell you until this you are a really a long term investor so the insiders will know and they will dump the share and you will be the last leg of information i will be the last leg of information so technical analysis is a way to understand the fundamental in you know some fundamental good or bad information which may happen by tracking the big parties and the idea is they are the first leg of information and they have some news which we may not know so all this fundamental looks it is good for long term but if you are uh, you can't bear this kind of fall you have a 6 month view when the prices crash then all that fundamental theory will not work to manage yourself if you, even if you would have gone by overvaluation if you look it looks super overvalued because against 21% cagr i am getting a 120% cagr so fundamentally by valuation it is overvalued technically there are all signs then i don't see what is the point to hold so i had exited my position somewhere here when you know this had you know got broken i had exited my position but uh now we need to see how things are changing and again these are my view nothing is a recommendation i can keep buying i can keep selling uh, i will go by charts if some day the charts will look too bad i will you know keep the funda in hold because uh, you know you never know what kind of bad news can come who could have thought that the ceo is going to quit but it happened and of course over valuation was there so again coming back to what went wrong respect charts six when big guys they sell you cannot expect prices to sustain without big buyers so all this long term investing is good but long term investing means 2 3 4 years the big guys can keep selling for one year because they hold such big quantities for them also it takes sometimes one year to offload their position they will keep distributing slowly so uh long term means basically 5 to 7 year long term is not one year and the big guys i am sorry this is bug guys but i mean when the big guys they are selling uh you know you cannot if you are not exiting you cannot have a situation where prices will not fall so either you exit by learning technicals or you be a long term investor and you don't worry about these you know short term cycles of one and two years and you have a longer term view and you have your margin of safety while you know paying the price don't overpay 
So now given all of this, now what can happen because this is the most important part. So though all this bad is happening, there are certain things good which have happened and which are happening, which if you see in terms of, uh, you know, commercialization of some new APIs, some filing, uh, which has happened, uh, the CDMO business, which they are just starting some long term arrangements have been made, there is some co investment which has happened, uh, sales still, you know, they never got in into a negative sales growth, still the sales growth was like 2%, 5% was there. Uh, in the latest quarter, there has been, you know, some uh, sales which has been not some inventory which is not converted into sales that is expected to convert. Uh, some new injectables have come. Uh, Turkey, despite of all that currency issue in terms of, you know, constant dollar performance, uh, the performance has been good. Uh, there has been a long term multi year deal for API, which this API business suffered, but there has been a multi year deal with one of the top 10 animal pharma company, which they say will be annually somewhere around, you know, $10 million, which is around 70 crore and that is going to contribute from FY23. Margins, it looks like it has formed the bottom prices has fallen by 60-70%. Again, I don't know what is the bottom because all the technical charts, everything is a probability. The price can again fall from 150 to 105 rupees. Nobody knows about price. What we need know is uh, we have to play when the probability to win is higher and we have to you know buy when probability to lose money is lower and we have to sell when probability to lose money is higher. That is how we should operate. And uh, whether the price falls 150 rupee or 100 rupee, we need to manage based on the kind of valuation we are paying. We need to manage based on the kind of allocation we are making. Like if we do a 20, 15% allocation and then it falls 50%, of course, everybody, one will be very fearful to buy. You can't take your position to 30%, 40%. But if one has a position of 3%, 4% from 150, even if it falls to 100. And if you're sure that fundamentally now the stock is like very attractive, you can go from 4% to 8% or 10% or you can wait for the right time you can wait for the charts to turn everybody needs to take a call whether if you know his thesis pure funda valuation based short term mid term techno funda charts we need to do our own analysis build our own process and do our own exercise so now the raw material prices seems like bottoming it could be the worst because the margins were almost in one quarter almost like zero percent uh, the currency issue resolution we don't know when it will happen so you know orange color means not at all in hand raw material means we can have some views ESOP related cost reduction this looks certain uh, growth uh, coming back or not so the triggers are there is a multi-year deal on the CDMO side something is happening their uh, formulation business has been doing well uh, if we exclude the currency impact Turkey has been doing good so there could be chances of growth coming back but the US uh, story and all I think that is going to play out in FY24 uh, and still there will be some kind of, you know, front end capex and, you know, there is, there will be some kind of, of front end expenses, which will be there price bottom, maybe 60, 70 fall. I showed you in the chart. If we look at the price, if we look at the RSI, it looks like, you know, uh, look at the volume. It looks like bottom is forming, but nothing is certain. I mean, technicals can go for a toss and technicals is also a game of probability. And I don't see any momentum. In fact, whenever the stock will hit that 180, 190 rupee, I see that, you know, that uh, 50 week moving average coming as a resistance. So uh, don't even, I mean, if it's only earnings, which can change the direction, but usually when stocks fall like this, let me tell you, frankly, I don't see any kind of quick up move. I see some consolidation, which will happen if results improve, then again, it can go. And what we need to track is we need to track the new CEO performance because I see some people who are very bearish on the new CEO. Some are very bullish on the new CEO. Uh, if you see the new CEO has come from Sanofi, but he has more of a marketing background. Previous to that, he was a chief marketing officer in Airtel. So we need to see because all said and done, okay, Animal Pharma is not that R&D focused, it's more of brand business, but we need to see his performance, how he has done. Uh, Sanofi, I would say nothing great, nothing bad. So I will take more like how he performs going forward. Uh, we need to see if, uh, you know, whatever they have said that, you know, this will happen, the 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 10 year deal will start contributing from fy23 the uh, us will start contributing from fy24 so we need to see if they are walking the talk inflation is something which i have been talking in fact one inside if i highlighted after reading all the annual reports in may june i highlighted as inflation so we need to keep a watch on inflation we need to look if the growth triggers which they are telling if that needs to play out so even if i am taking a position at 150 i don't mind taking booking 10 percent loss and quitting when i see again on charts there is something bad which is happening or if I have really a long-term view, I can, you know, 
I can hold and then I can build position further on, you know, 100 rupee. But I, I would say if you look at the current valuation that 150, my target price by FY23 was 250 rupees. So that is how I see valuation. So I never saw the valuation very cheap and uh, 300, I can't even talk of the kind of valuation it was there. And we need to keep following that valuation curve and the chart. So uh, some of the things I have highlighted here, which they are telling the, you know, that uh, the commercialization of APIs we stock. So we have seen all these points and we need to, you know, keep monitoring. So this is what it is. This is what we need to track. These are some of the learnings, uh, some of the things I also didn't expect, but uh, some of the things uh, I was looking for because those were the risks. Uh, of course, I have deep respect for technical analysis, even though I'm a fundamental guy. And these are some of the examples to highlight why just knowing funda doesn't may not work, at least in the short term, it may not work if one is not willing to look at, you know, 50, 60% price correction. So I hope you have a fair idea of what went wrong, why it went wrong, how we could have avoided what is the, what could be possible in future, how to track the future, and then how to take our own call for further buys and sell. So I look forward to you uh, seeing you in some other video. Thanks for your time.